Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now you may recognize my guest today as uh, Matthew Moss, my co-host on the Fighting On Film podcast um, and uh, the creator and editor of the Armourers Bench channel on YouTube. But what you may not know is that his day job, he works within defense editing and firearms journalism. Um, and at the time of recording, he's currently reporting the ongoing war in the Ukraine. So I'm gonna ask him about his role um, with the website Overt Defense. So for starters, Matt, would you be able to tell us about your role and how you came to work within the industry? I'm the editor of OvertDefense.com, and um, I, I originally started off working in firearms journalism um, as an offshoot from my research and, and my historical background. Um, and then I was asked if I'd like to work within the Overt Defense uh, website, and I, I agreed and became the editor. And I've been working on that for about 18 months now, maybe two years. Um, mm. And we've grown quite significantly over the last 12 months. Um, and recently, we have an international team. And, and, and recently, we've been, we've been covering the, uh, the build up towards the conflict in Ukraine, and the almost inevitable invasion itself. So how many of you work for Overt Defense? It varies. We have a, a number of contributors around the world. Um, I think we have about maybe 12 at the moment, off and on. Um, myself, I've been running, I, I don't, I didn't tend to write as much um, up until now, but uh, yeah. I've been running the um, the daily update feed that we run on, um, on the war itself. And what my role there is, um, I collect information from various different sources and I collate it all together. So I'm drawing on um, stuff that the larger networks like BBC, Sky, um, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, et cetera. Lots of different um, larger media outlets are uh, reporting on the ground because they have, they have boots on the ground and they have um, people doing various different bits and bobs. Then I'm, I'm bringing in uh, open source intelligence, which is a really important aspect. And that's stuff that's shared uh, online. Um, lots of um, social media posts um, from Twitter, uh, Facebook, Telegram, those sort of, sort of outlets. And they tend to come from either troops on the ground um, and also civilians. And it's, it's they're, they're sharing what might be outside the window, that sort of thing. Um, and then also we have uh, on the team over at Defence, we have some um, open source intelligence analysts. And uh, what they do is they take either what's found online through those open sources or through satellite imagery. Um, they examine what can be seen from that, Im that imagery and, and that information. So recently we... Um, we broke the story uh, of confirming where the Ukrainian Navy's flagship was uh, in Mykolaiv. And it's, it had been sunk at its moorings and a photograph had been posted online by someone locally. And we geolocated where that was uh, using satellite imagery and then double checked it with Google Maps and then some commercial imagery that we we brought on board and we managed to, to work out exactly where the ship had been scuttled by a crew, uh, probably. And we were also able to narrow down when it, when it probably was sunk. So it was sunk within the first 72 hours of, of the conflict beginning um, to avoid its, its capture. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the little things that we've done. And then also with the, um, the nuclear power plant that was captured the other day, the, the very large battle there, that was incredible in that, there was a the, there was a live stream of of one of the plant's CCTV cameras um, that was live streamed by, we assume, um, one of the, the plant's uh, staff. Yeah. Uh, it may have been helping Ukrainian forces on the ground to, to see where the, the enemy were as well, um, and there was lots of lots of um, tracer fire flying around mm. and, and blasts, and I think you saw it as well, Rob. Because yeah, it was incredible it to, to watch a. A firefight in real time. Um, it, yeah, it, it, it was pretty surreal, to be honest. Mm. Like a, an hour-long battle for a nuclear power plant, which is something you never ever want to see. No, um, it was all. really surreal. Breaks the Geneva Convention, in fact. Um, but a lot of the news networks ran uh, a story saying that the, there was a fire at the nuclear plant, and and that's immediately when you read those words, that, that short sense, that's terrifying. You think yeah. Chernobyl, which. 
is intrinsically linked to Ukraine anyway. Um, but what we did from the, uh, the CCTV feed, uh, we were able to geolocate where that feed was looking from. And then we could work out where the fire that we could see in the, in the feed itself was. And we could identify that it was in an office block and a mm. training center rather than actual somewhere that might damage a reactor or something like that. So it's, it's, it's been really interesting, but really, um, really intense. Yeah, I was going to ask how you source your stories, but you sort of, you, you, you did it for Well, us. yeah, <laughs> it, 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 they come from all over. Um, and it, it's the verifying that is the key thing. Um, yes. Because fog of war is, is a real thing. And we really, myself and almost anyone else within um, journalism, doesn't really know what's going on. There's military intelligence that probably doesn't have a, a full picture of what's going on themselves. So um, there's there's lots of outlets doing really good work, verifying and trying to narrow down which sources are legitimate. And because there's all kinds of weird things that have popped up in this um, stuff about um, God, I I had a couple of examples I thought of the other day, but they've they've, they've vanished. But there, there's been there's been lots of misinformation that has popped up, and some of that is is um, prophesized by Russia itself, um, right. and some of it's just uh, people that have found something and they think they know they know what they have. I remember was it early the on the, the ghost of Kiev. It was actually footage from the Armor Three video game that was being. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was yeah. It was one of the the uh, the air combat sims that someone had shared that footage of, and um, Ghost of Kiev is really interesting, really. But that's going to be studied by quite a few people in, mm. in years to come, I think. But yeah, the the um, that that footage is is really interesting because people were, were twigging on it pretty fast and the guy that had shared it he'd he'd actually listed in the description that it was a tribute um right. to the concept of the, of the of the ghost but a lot of people took it and ran and, and said that was you know the actual footage of, of air to air combat um mm. one of the things that came out the other day was that the the belarusian chief of the general staff had resigned um completely fa fanciful not right. hadn't happened at all and people were sharing photograph of a resignation letter that's one of the examples mm. i was trying to think of a moment ago where just things pop up and you could run with that and you could make a story out of that if you wanted to yeah but you have to verify things as much as you can like i'm sure there's stuff that we've we've written in the daily feeds that is perhaps um not 100 percent correct or some of the geolocation on imagery and stuff isn't you know 100 percent but we, we do our best and you know we haven't got the 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 uh the budget of let's say the new york times or yeah. well BBC, yeah i mean that's yeah I mean, I, I think, the beast you know all of you you and your colleagues are doing that absolute sterling work trying to cite sources and make sure that the, the information that you're sharing is, is reputable and um, so finally the last question i want to ask you about is um what are the challenges i mean we've, we've talked about them throughout but you know what are your challenges uh, within your job and especially reporting and conflicts such as Ukraine as they develop? Yeah, I, I, the, the main one is is verifying the information that you're seeing, because not only is that information just patchy, it might be some reports from from something that, you know, uh, someone on the ground has said to someone, uh, and it comes through as, it can immediately, on, on something like Twitter, if someone posts breaking and then a piece of news, that immediately takes on kind of um, an authority. So people right. see breaking, um, especially if it's someone that has, um, you know, a large number of followers, is trustworthy, you know, is someone that's respected. Um, that can become something that is easily snowballed into a larger thing where people go, oh, well, uh, there might be a statement saying the Ukrainians have made a counterattack near Kharkiv or somewhere like that. And someone it, that might be like one one company of infantry making it you know pushing a observation post back 500 right. yards but that could snowball into there's a major offensive in the region and they're pushing the russians straight back you know um until that's verified it that's that's just it's fanciful um and it's a, an exaggeration of what may have happened on the ground. So you, that's something we've all, always got to be mindful of. We you don't want to report something um, out of context and 
sort of aggrandize mm -hmm. um, a small story into something that it isn't. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's lots there's lots of things that you, you've got to be wary of. Um, claiming the aircraft have been shot down. So there was a couple yeah. of um, Ukrainians uh, claimed a couple of transport aircraft shot down during the first few days of the war, and that was claimed as confirmed because the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense stated it as such. But then you've also got to factor in, um, you've got to factor in the information war that the Ukrainians are playing as well. So it's not only Russians with disinformation about uh, Ukraine shelling civilians in, in, in Donbass, et cetera. Um, you've, got to, you've got to think about, well, the Ukrainians are engaged in a propaganda war themselves, not only to keep morale of their own people up, but also to influence Western uh, opinion and try and create, create that new no-fly zone that, that they, sure. they've been calling for. Um, so that's one of the things you've got to think about as well, because while they're the injured party, they've been invaded, they're still active in within that sphere of in, the information war. And there's, there's going to be ways that they shape information that they release to make it seem that certain things are happening when they may not be, you know, quite the case so with those at transport aircraft i don't think we've ever seen um any actual wreckage to confirm that those have been have been, have been shot down whereas we've seen um su-34s lots of helicopters um and they've been confirmed because we've seen tail numbers in wreckage and that sort of thing on the ground um but yeah there's there's a number of of um, things that make kind of reporting on that sort of thing a little bit tricky but there's so many great outlets other than the, you know the one i'm involved in that that do fantastic work that's you know yeah there's all of the the reputable uh, mainstream media i suppose you call them um and then there's lots of other defense um centered websites that, uh, like like ourselves that, that just focus on defense news and yeah, there's lots of in people the, in the yeah comments, drop some drop, drop some links and I'll, I'll i'll give you some um links as well um and then there's lots of people that are um independent analysts that sure. just sift through open source intelligence and they try and share that out and try and verify as much as they can. Um, but yeah. So I, anyone watching, I would definitely urge you to, when you look at a piece of information report or what appears to be a primary source, definitely consider that things are going on um, that may influence the way those are portrayed. Um, because well, yeah. I think the information war with this, this conflict is, a huge factor because Russia are known to be um, Russia are known to be, uh, I suppose, quite active within that sphere, and and Ukraine have shown themselves not to be um, slack in that area as well because their their PR game has been excellent and their their public facing um, accounts have, have been very good, giving daily updates and stuff. In fact, they've they've kind of dominated the information sphere in that they're the the Russian side isn't really putting out information um, because of the nature of their press because it's more for inward facing than outward facing, um, and also you uh, you've got with the Ukrainians that as I mentioned earlier they're trying to influence the way the West views the conflict uh, in a positive light. So I would definitely encourage people to to take sources and, and think about you know the veracity of them. Um, Always, always check a couple of new sources. I, I, I always try yeah. and say, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's great advice. I mean, Matt from Overt Defence, all your colleagues, you know, not only just Overt Defence, but everyone working within the defence sphere and, and editing absolutely. sphere, journalism, to try and get the stories out. It's doing absolute sterling work. Um, and thanks for joining us, Matt. It's, been, it's a great insight. And, and don't forget to subscribe to Matt's channel, my channel. Um, check out the uh, comments below. I'll drop some links to some good uh, sites for you to keep track of everything. So thanks for joining us, Matt. Thank you.